in fat saturation, we also do not want fat to contribute to the signal in the final images. So what do we do? So we take advantage of the different resonant frequencies of fat and water. So just means that here we see that there is a different rate that the fat and the water would wobble. So lipid will be wobbling in this frequency while the water will be wobbling this way. So what we do is we hit the tissue of concern with a saturation pulse or somewhat like a magic bullet which would saturate the fat protons. So this is the saturation pulse. By the time we give the 90 degree excitatory pulse, the fat protons are already now saturated and will not contribute to the final image. Because we exploit the different resonant uh, frequencies of fat and water, fat sat is what we refer to as the frequency selective uh, fat saturation. So, going back to our prior image, this is a steer, this is a fat sat. In both sequences, we see that edema is hyperintensive signal. But what can you comment about the signal of fat? Which of this would provide a better or uniform fat suppression? Here we see that fat sat has uh, areas of incomplete fat suppression compared to the steer images right here. This is because fat, fat saturation is prone to non-uniform magnetic field in this case because of the air bone interface. However, despite this disadvantage, fat sat also has its important uses. It can also be used for post-gadolinium or post-contrast T1 and T2 fat saturated images. Why do you ask? Can we use tear for uh, post-gadolinium? So let's uh, take a look. Recall that this is a diagram of the inversion recovery sequence. And the uh, time to inversion should be less than the T1 property, or T1 relaxation time of that uh, substance we want to none, say fat or water. Now since gadolinium has a T1 a short T1 property, a T1 shortening effect, its signal will be null together with the fat in a steer sequence. So, in other words, gadolinium will not be visualized in this uh, image. So, this is our last topic, uh, the in-phase and out-phase images. I'm quite sure that you're familiar with in face and not face images. Previously, I have memorized these sequences, not appreciating why it is called so in face or out face. So, what is the principle behind the creation of these images? So, take a look. So, this is the fat and the water proton. Initially, they are processing this way, in the same direction, at the time of the 90 degree excitatory pulse. After that pulse, there will be times then they will be facing this way. There will be times facing this way, or that way, or this way. If you notice here, there are times that both of them are facing in the same direction like this and like this. If we take a picture of them at this time, here and here, the signal of fat and water will be additive, hence a bright signal. And this is what we call the in-phase. They are in-phase with each other. There will also be times when the protons are facing this way, opposite towards each other 
this timing. So if you take a picture of them at this time, the signal will be subtractive. Hence, a signal drop if they occur in the same voxel or in the same picture. So this effect or signal drop in the alt face image would only occur if they occupy the same voxel. An example of this is intracellular fat in the fatty liver. It's end of the part of part 3. Let's have our post test now. So that was the last slide. So let's go back to our guide question. So first, this graph shows what? T1 or T2 relaxation time. First clue here is in the graph, indicates here the longitudinal magnetization of the z-axis. So it then shows here that fat is quick to regain its longitudinal magnetization. So this is called the T1 relaxation time. Next question two. This image shows, uh, so what TR and TE properties are needed to create this image? So what image first? What type of image first? This is a T2 weighted sequence. So T2 weighted sequence highlights the long TE property of water. So this is created by long TR and long TE uh, property. And if you can recall here that the water holds a long weight, which will help us recall that uh, T2 weighted sequence along TR and long TE time to highlight the T2 property of water, the long uh, TE property of water. No, excuse me, long T2 property of water. And T25, the matching type, So in this sequence, we have the 90-degree pulse followed by the 180-degree refocusing pulse, then the echo. So this is what we call the spin echo. Number four, this looks like the previous sequence, 9180, 9180, except that we have here a 180-degree pulse before the 90, the time, inversion time here. Now the answer is inversion recovery and the last question we have here an excitate, excitatory pulse followed by an echo but there is no 180 degree refocusing pulse there is however an echo produced so which this echo must have been produced by using a magnetic gradient so the correct answer is a gradient echo so thank you very much for listening. Hope you learned something. So these are my references.